Thank God for his son Jesus came into this world to bear our sins. Oh, hallelujah. What would our lives look like if Jesus hadn't died on the cross? Praise the Lord. You know where he brought you from. Now just imagine if you were still there. Hallelujah. But Jesus translated us into the kingdom, his kingdom, and I'm so grateful unto him for that. To all of God's people, we say, if you have any visitors today, we thank God for you coming, being a part of this worship service. I want you to feel right at home and let the Lord bless your life as only he can. We do honor our clergy, praise the Lord, the absence of District Elder Clarence Johnson, to Elder Ronald Golden, to District Elder Vaughn McCray, to our deacons, we praise God for them. Praise the Lord to the missionaries, the mothers, all of the saints of God. Thank God for our musicians that add flavor and essence into our worship service, to our ushers, praise the Lord, to everyone who plays a role, to our nurses, praise God. Thank God for them this morning. And to all of the people being in the house of the Lord today. And uh, to all of you, we thank you. We missed you last week. Praise the Lord. I was getting a little reprimand because I didn't tell the saints that they could come too. But I didn't want to draw people away from our service and take them to Plainfield. But uh, you can view the service in Plainfield uh, last week on the Facebook, our Facebook page. It's there in its entirety. And you may not have been there in, in uh, person, but you can view and see how the Lord ministered to his people. Um, we will be serving communion next Sunday. And there is a correction in our bulletin. It has June 14th, but it's supposed to be June 9th. All right. And today I want to send a shout out. Members, because today is her day. And that's Sister Lawanda Connolly. The day is her birthday. Thank God for her in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm asking you for special prayer requests for Mother Dorothy Jones and Sister Joan Baker. Uh, they're Bishop Lamas Johnson's nieces by marriage. Uh, they lost their sister yesterday, Sister Shirley Greer. So pray for them, that the Lord will comfort them and take them through and give them consolation in their time of sadness. Will you do that for me? And remember the names on the prayer list that we continue to list each week. And last but not me, I feel prayers. You know, I feel prayers because sometimes I, I don't have the energy. I don't have the uh. You know, but when you pray, the Lord give me the oh, which is his anointing to speak the word from the Lord. Also, you know, the dinners downstairs today. Praise the Lord. After service, the seniors platters will be brought up. But those who are not seniors can go down and get your uh, meal in Jesus name. Uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number 8. And I'll read from verses 22 through verses 26. And it is not my intention to preach uh, very long today. I used to be able to do it in 28 minutes. But older now, and it takes me a little time to get wound up. Praise the Lord. But if you pray for me, I'm sure the Lord will bless in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 8, beginning at verse number 22, when you have it, will you stand to your feet? When you have it, will you say amen? And he came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And when he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town, 
and when he had spit on his eyes, put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And when and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into town, nor tell it to any in the town. Let the church say amen. amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Lord God, my Father, we praise you. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. God of Israel and Moses, the prophets and the kings. God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we have come today to worship you to adore you and to magnify your name. We ask you, Lord, to look on us one more time, for we are your children, Lord. You know our needs. You know what we are looking for. We ask you to give it to us. Oh, God, my Father, in this world that's full of chaos, this world that's full of savagery, but yet in you we have hope and peace. Lord, stretch out your hand today. Remember, O oh God, the bereaved families, touch their hearts and minds. Give them comfort, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, look on the souls that are yet sitting in darkness. Shine your light into their hearts. Oh God, my Father, we ask you to send your anointing power. O oh God, let your spirit be free in the midst of this house. Walk up and down the aisles, Lord. Lay your hands on your sons and your daughters. Bless them, Lord. Give them what they desire. Give them what they need. Oh, God, bind the hand of Satan. Rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, minister to us by your Holy Spirit. I ask you to do it for your glory in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. Those who believe the Lord heard the prayer, let them shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand, praise, and take your seat. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. I want to speak to you from the text that I read to you. I touch. I need it. Anybody else need it? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to speak to you today about a subject dealing with or being blind or blindness. Any type of blindness that one suffers has a disabilitating effect upon a person's life. A blind person is at a disadvantage to make certain achievements in life. And if they achieve something, it is unusually difficult for them. It is a disadvantage to that individual because they don't have what others have to be able to see beyond. Sometimes, being blind deprives a person of their potential and their ability to function at a normal level. Blindness places restrictions and barriers and boundaries on someone's capability to live in an environment where they can reach their full potential. A person who is blind, has limitations which control their lives because they're unable to see. And because of a lack of being able to see, a blind person is constrained to and in any environment where there is darkness or darkness exists, there is obscurity, unable to see clearly. 
there is no clarity within their environment. They don't have the ability to have clear vision. There are diverse types of blindness, which I would like to discuss today. The first is there is physical blindness. The eyes are not able to comprehend due to some physical ailment with their eyes. Physical blindness is when a person has limited or no sight because a person can only see partially. They're unable to see clearly, to see fully. Limited sight, unable to see with their eyes. Their eyes are no, no longer able to be the portals which they can envision the world. The windows that once brought them light into their mind has been closed to darkness. Being physically blind makes a person handicapped, makes them live in a, a life of being disadvantaged. Other people can see clearly with clarity, but their light is dim because they have a physical disability. to physically visualize, visualize the world. They're visually challenged. They have an impediment with vision and they must compensate what they're lacking with assistance and aids in order to be able to navigate through life, through their environment. That is one thing I, I, I pray about. I see a person who is blind and unable to see this physical world, the beauty, the magnificence that God has created. And yet in their minds, they're able to be to able to manifest images. And if they had their sight and lost it, they have that in their recollection. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Although a person has lost their ability to see because of the blindness that they're experiencing, a physical impairment, they're still able to function in life by overcoming the obstacles that are associated with their blindness. You know, life has to be overcome. <laughs> I say I, life has to be overcome. If you don't overcome life, life will overcome you, all right? You will be the one who life has made depressed because of your perception of life. You will be the one that life has beat up and left a shell of a person. You will be the one. Unless you overcome life, life will get and I'm determined life's not going to get me. I'm going to get life. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to live and be sad. I'm not going to live and be distressed and full of anxiety and worry. No, I'm going to hold on to the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. It is the joy of the Lord that allows me to keep my sanity in an insane world in an insane society because Jesus Christ is holding me together. And I'm not the only one he holding together. He holding all of you together. He holding the world together. Oh, thank you, Jesus, by the power of his word. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Secondly, although a person is physically blind and unable to envision the world blindness that I want to talk to you about this morning. And I believe that mental blindness is even worse than physical blindness because a person who has 
Mental blindness can see with their eyes, but they've closed their mind to understand. They've closed their mind to be able to comprehend and to perceive things. There are a vast number of people from all walks of life who are mentally blind. People who don't want to expand their ability to understand. People who are content with the way the world is. They're content with the way their life is. In other words, in Ebonics, they ain't trying to do no better. They're happy just to You want to always go higher. You want to always do more. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. People who can never consider expanding their knowledge and their ability to comprehend things beyond what they know now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You all, uh, everybody should have read the book by Helen Keller when they was in school. She was a young girl who was blind, but went on to achieve great things. Praise God and improve the quality of life for people who were like her, who were blind. Listen to what Sister Keller said. The only thing worse than being blind is having eyes, but no vision. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You got eyes, but you don't have any vision. You got eyes, but you can't see nothing. Praise the Lord. Mental blindness prevents a person from experiencing their real potential in life. Mental blindness keeps an individual from enjoying life in its fullest. Mental person from expanding their thoughts and their perceptions in life. Mental blindness causes a person to look back over their lives and have regrets. Mental blindness deprives you of your power to hope. It holds you back. It hinders you. But you have to break off the chains of mental blindness and see things through God's reality. See things the way they really are. And finally, the third type of blindness that I want to talk to you about is spiritual blindness. And spiritual blindness, I believe, is the most detrimental and harmful to a person, especially to a person who is saved, the person who confesses to know the Lord. To a saint is because it is seductive and it is deceptive in nature. It closes a person's mind from seeing things the way they really are. A spiritually blind person most of the time doesn't realize that they're suffering from that condition. And in some cases, it's too late. That person is carried along by their own desires. This is not what God wants for me. It's what I want for myself. They carry the battle on their own opinions and their own will. When you think you right all the time, I mean, come on, you got to be wrong sometime. <laughs> It's like one, one preacher told me, said, I said, have you ever made mistakes? He said, yeah, once. I started to tell him, you need to stop lying. Praise the Lord. Old as you are and you only made one mistake in life, you almost perfect. You always right. Everybody else wrong. I'm right. I'm right. I know I'm right. And you could be wrong, as they say, with two left shoes. Thank you, Jesus. A spiritually blind person doesn't realize their condition. The person is carried away with their own thoughts. Usually, they're limited in their knowledge of the scriptures because the scriptures will enlighten you. 
The scriptures will direct you. The scriptures will tell you when you're wrong. Praise the Lord. The scriptures ain't just there to make you shout and clap and speak in tongues. No, it is corrective in its nature and its essence. The steps of a good man aren't ordered by the good man. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Praise the Lord. We should walk in the path of the light and we will never be in darkness. We got to quote a few scriptures, but their interpretation is incorrect. A spiritually bl a blind person usually twists the scripture in order to justify their own opinion. That's why the word of God gives us the commandment to grow unto maturity and to obtain knowledge of Jesus Christ. But a spiritually blind person often seduces and deceives others to agree with them, deceive others to follow them, they wrong, they know they're wrong, but they're able to convince other people to follow and to promote them in their wrongness. Jesus warned, can the blind lead the blind without both of them ending up in a ditch? Amen to that. The only way to contradict or counteract, praise God, becoming spiritually blind, Jesus Christ. Knowledge of the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 said that you be no more tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by every concept, every thought, every opinion. You grab hold to it. Before you heard it, you had an opinion, but now you listen to somebody else. Now you've adopted their opinion. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ had confrontations with people who should have known who he was. People who should have known better. There were so-called the righteous people. Jesus looked at them and said, I don't see your knowledge. I don't see your great understanding. He said, you have eyes, but you can't see nothing. You got ears, but you can't hear nothing. You got minds, but you refuse to understand the words that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will leave you in your blindness until you see what you take off your spiritual blindness. Then I will talk to you and then you can seek the truth then i will heal you the deception that is involved with being spiritually blind is that you think you can see now if you were talking to ray charles or stevie wonder because these are the most popular blind people i know praise the lord and you describing something to them and they say, yeah, yeah. Then you say, you got it? Say, yeah, I can see it, pastor. Well, wait a minute, you're blind. How can you see? A spiritually blind person thinks they can see. They think they have insight. They think they have more knowledge. They're, they have more intellect than other people. It is because they are spiritually blind. First John chapter 2, verse 9 through 11 says, if anyone claims a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause that person to stumble. But anyone who hates brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't even like today uh, when it rains and the gray sky gets gray. And uh, after three days, my personality starts to change. 
I'm saying to myself, Lord, when is the sun going to come out? I want to feel the rays of the sun on my face. I want to feel the warmth. But all I get is rain and clouds. And it sort of give me depression for a few days. But oh, when the sun come out, praise the Lord, my soul get happy in Christ. Unto the world, he brought light into a dark place. He brought hope into the lives of men and women who needed help. Help that they couldn't find at the synagogue. They couldn't find it in religion. Their faith was already weak and their joy was gone. They had been subjected to the darkness of sin and the resistance of the religious leaders who were trying to hide the light from them. These religious leaders looked at Jesus with a closed mind and they had looked at him as a threat to their way of life. They tried to hide the light because they knew that in him was life and that life was the light of men. The religious leaders heard Jesus say, I am the light of the world. And he that follows me won't walk in darkness. But what the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes listen to Jesus testify. Oh, praise the Lord. And they said, Jesus, your testimony is not true. Praise the Lord. They say, you are a liar. Jesus looked at them and said to them, you don't know what you're talking about. You are from beneath. You from the earth. I'm from above. You are of this world, but I'm not of this world. Well, thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, I come from outside of the world to bring in the light, life to whoever believes in me. Then Jesus looked at the disciples who were following me and said, if you will continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Deception and seductiveness won't free anybody. It is the truth of the word. You look at the word as a mirror, praise God, and the word of God shines back to you the light and the truth. They looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, you said we're supposed to be free. We have never been in slavery. You're talking about what uh, Governor DeSantis does when it comes to black history? Want to wipe it away. It never happened. It's a myth. These brothers tried to wipe away 430 years. Israeli, praise God, slavery in Egypt. Jesus looked at them and said to them, you're of your father, the devil. Praise Jesus was rough, you know. You're lucky you didn't have Jesus as a pastor. You're lucky you don't have Jesus as a pastor. Jesus said, you of the devil. Your father was a liar. Praise the Lord. He was a murderer from the beginning. He resisted my light. Praise God. Heaven was full of light. And Lucifer was supposed to be the puffed up with his pride and tried to revolt against God. And the Lord said, you resist my light, I'm going to cast you out of heaven and put him out there on the earth. And Genesis said the earth was void, chaos, praise God, and darkness covered the deep. And in the midst of that darkness was Lucifer, Satan, that old lion, the dragon. Praise God. And the Lord said, you can't hide in the darkness, Lucifer. The Lord said, let there be light. Oh, hallelujah. And light sprung forth. Well, thank you, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Satan has resisted the truth from the beginning. Yep. Jesus said he didn't come into the world for men to continue to live in darkness. So, oh, praise the Lord. But he came to bring light. He came to reveal righteousness.
to the sons and the daughters of men. He came to shine light into the dark place, into our hearts, into our minds, not so that we could continue to remain in light. He brought truth. He brought liberty. Praise God. Jesus Christ comes into the lives of people who are in chaos. And Jesus speaks peace. Oh, yes, he does. So he dispels deceit. Truth eradicates falsehood. It exposes for darkness for what it is. So, oh, praise the Lord. He frees people. He heals people. He delivers people. So, oh, yes, he does. So, I did a survey today and said, how many people here, the Lord, have healed your body? Uh, how many people here have the Lord made a way for you? So, you was calling around for help. You was calling on people to come to your rescue. So, but the people didn't show but Jesus came, and when he came, he was right on time. Well, thank you, Jesus. Jesus' ministry was a potent ministry. It was not a weak ministry. Going through a graveyard, he met a man that had multiple demons. Who, when they tried to chain him, he broke the chains. So, he looked at Jesus and Jesus said, who are you? He said, my name is Legion. Oh, praise the name of God. Uh, and Jesus cast the devil out of him. And he said, Legion was running around the graveyard naked. But now after Jesus got rid of the demons, somebody gave him some clothes. And now Legion has clothes on him. And he's in his right mind. Jesus met people who were desperate. He met people who needed his help. And they couldn't find help nowhere else. But the help for the world today is in Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, it is. It's not in the drugstore prescription. It's not in the doctor's office. True help come from the Lord. Yep. That's why I lift my eyes to the hills. Yep. Because my help comes from Christ helped multitudes of people. Yep. When he came to town, the town was talking about it years later. Yep. Jesus was here. He raised somebody from the dead. Yep. Jesus healed the man who had leprosy. Yep. He looked on those that were bound and he spoke freedom to them. Yep. And their souls were free. Yep. On this particular text, yep. Jesus is going through Bethsaida. Uh, and the people hear that he's coming. Yep. So they take a blind man. Yep. They say, because we heard he opened up blind eyes. Yep. We heard he unstopped deaf men's ears. So we heard he loosed the tongue of the dumb. So, and this blind man is here in this condition. So, so they took him to Jesus. So, and Jesus told him and took him and led him out of the town. So, and when he led him out the town, so, this expression that says he spit on his eyes. So, I did my research. That word means spit. So Jesus took a big gob of spit and spit on his eyes. So in one instance, he rubbed the spit in the clay. So and then Jesus put his hands on the man so and prayed for him. So and then he told the man, look up. So has your vision improved? So and the man said, I can see. Yep. But men look foggy. Yep. Men look unclear. Yep. They look like trees. Yep. But Jesus said, I can't let you go like that. Yep. When you leave here with me, yep. you're going to see 2020. Yep. So he laid his hands on him again. Yep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
things. Now, everybody should understand that it didn't take Jesus two times to pray for the man for his eyes to come open. But it's for us who read the scriptures. We might have started out seeing, but along the way, we started to look dim. And you got to say I know everybody else in the church got 2020 vision. I know everybody else in the church think they already made it. But Jesus, I'm coming here again. I was here yesterday. I was here last week. I came to the throne of grace because you told me to come boldly. You told me don't come embarrassed. Don't come with your head held down. But come boldly and find grace to help in the time of need. I don't know about you, but the problems of life wrestling with the devil situations around me fighting against my mind Jesus I need a second touch Jesus will you pray for me will you lay your hands on me I'm to the point now my joy is almost depleted but Jesus I know you can renew me Jesus if I know you can encourage me. Touch me, Lord, one more time. Touch my mind. Touch my heart. Touch my spirit. The devil is fighting me in my mind. Lord, lay your hands on me. I want you to anoint me one more time. Do it again, Lord. Touch me. Till the chains come off. Touch me. Till my joy come back. Touch me. Till this problem. Don't bother me no more. But Jesus, I need a second touch. You touched me 45 years ago. I want you to touch me today. Touch me till I look at hope. Touch me till I'm ready to work for you. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. Bring me out of where I am. Place me up on your throne. Place me in the hollow of your hand. I need a second touch i need to see things clearly oh hallelujah i need a second touch praise the lord now i believe this is the only place in the bible where jesus had to lay hands on somebody twice all right now that does not take away from the power of god but I believe the Gospels are written to us to let us know sometimes, number one, we don't know everything about God. And sometimes we have to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I was wrong. Lord, I need you to minister to me again. I need a second touch, Lord. The Lord said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it for you. But as long as you walk around and think you got it made in Jesus and you don't ever make a mistake and you don't ever sin and you don't ever get weak, there's no need to ask for a second. Meaning to lay his hands on his children. That's what the shepherd does. We are the sheep of his pasture. Praise the Lord. The shepherd would minister to the sheep, taking oil and rubbing it into their wounds. Praise the Lord. To keep the flies and the gnats away from them. Then he would lead them down to green pastures. He would lead them beside 
the still water so they could receive relaxation and be rejuvenated. The shepherd knows what you need. But you can't walk around like you super saint. SS. I got SS tattooed on my t-shirt. I'm a super saint. I never get in trouble. I never get weak. I never get discouraged. Because every time I do, I look at my super status. And I'm encouraged in the Lord. You better take that SS off. And put on one say, have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Mm-hmm. In the Lord, no matter what you go through, Jesus Christ is right there with you. No matter what you need to get you where you need to be, Jesus Christ is willing to supply. But we have to recognize that we are not gods. We are the children of God. And that there are times in our life that we just have to go back and ask the Lord, touch me again. Praise the Lord. Rejuvenate me. Renew me. Restore me. Give me what I need, Jesus. And sometimes as saints, we don't know what we need. Because we've been playing it off like we got everything we need. We don't know what we need. Well, I tell you, this is a challenge to the saints. Next time you pray, Ask the Lord to show you yourself. Don't show me, Lord, what I think I am. Show me the real me. And Lord, after you show me the real me, help me to become what you want me to be. Oh, you can't lose with that prayer. Hallelujah, because the Lord wants you to be what he wants you to be. God, your feet. And give the Lord a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Praise him for his grace. Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for his great love towards us. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. I was wondering what to preach. The Holy Spirit said to me, you need a second touch. Me? Me? I'm the pastor of the church. And I'm, I could imagine Lord saying, and not just you, the whole church need a second touch. I'm talking about the general church. The pressure we are under just in life. And if you're in life, the devil fighting you and you're under pressure. But being saved, the devil's fighting you even harder and the pressure's still there. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. The Lord is sustaining us every day. Every day we get up, we go to work, we go about our daily activity. He keeps you. Praise the Lord. He calls good things. To sh- That's why we have to have a thankful spirit. Because all that we have, all we are, belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there someone?